Nowadays, the availability of pornography is nothing like it used to be, right? Someone used to have a magazine or a video. Now there's access to pornography is just, you know, a couple, you know, thumb taps to, to a couple people. Uh, uh, and people uh, yeah. can get very, you know, young people can develop a lot of their arousal template to very extreme experiences, right? Because of the availability of extreme porn and never actually have any real world experience. So if you think about it, their brains are becoming wired up to become aroused watching other people have sex. Anytime. Yeah we experience a powerful emotional response or physical response. So that could be sexual arousal, it could be hunger, it could be fear, it could be excitement. Whatever preceded that becomes the thing that our brain basically thinks leads to that. Many people consider masturbation a healthy and harmless practice. However, there might be several dangers to uncontrolled masturbation which could possibly affect the brain negatively. Stay till the end to learn how masturbation could be destroying your brain. Masturbation has become more prevalent, especially among young people with easy access to internet pornography. Let us first listen to neuroscientist Andrew Huberman speak about the change in porn access. Nowadays, the availability of pornography is nothing like it used to be, right? Someone used to have a magazine or a video. Now there's access to pornography is just, you know, a couple, you know, thumb taps. Here he is trying to explain the ease with which people get access to adult content. While masturbation is a regular activity among males and females, it has several physical effects on the human body. It can possibly cause physical injuries, including rashes, abrasions, chafing, skin irritation, and possible infection. Also, it can increase the stress levels in the brain due to hormonal release during orgasm. As far as psychological effects are concerned, masturbation can bring feelings of guilt and shame, as well as feelings of inadequacy during sexual intercourse. Masturbation can also become an addiction, although many people don't think that is the case. Furthermore, masturbation can also lead to obsessive compulsive behavior and decreased libido during sex. Therefore, it becomes increasingly difficult to find pleasure when making love with a partner. Again, let's hear what Andrew Huberman said about it. Young people can develop a lot of their arousal template yeah. to very extreme experiences right, because of the availability of extreme porn to, and never actually have any real world experience. Yes. So if you think about it, their brains are becoming wired up to become aroused watching other people have sex. And Masturbation is very dangerous because it creates a powerful response in the brain similar to the one created by hunger, fear, and other physical activity. Masturbation, like any of these activities mentioned above, affects our dopamine levels. What we know for sure is that if an individual repeatedly engages in this circuitry, let's say, say masturbation and pornography with increasingly um, potent forms of stimulation that are on a screen, yeah. a couple of things happen. First of all, what's being reinforced? What's being reinforced is a high dopaminergic response to watching other people engage in sexual behavior, which is very different than being in a first person sexual experience. Okay, so right there, you know that what's being reinforced is not actually any kind of improvement in communication yeah, skills. It's voyeurism. it's voyeurism. The renowned neuroscientist is saying that masturbation and pornography creates a world where people become afraid of real sexual experiences. Also, there are more cases of sexual dysfunction caused by increasing reliance on masturbation. We are entering a world where people would prefer watching others have sex rather than actually participating themselves. Therefore, it would be harder to engage in an actual relationship or start a new one because they are constantly masturbating and watching others carry out sexual activity on their screen. Further, masturbation and pornography undermine the process of finding a mate. Huberman also discussed the effects of masturbation on the hormonal level. A hormone called prolactin increases dramatically after ejaculation in males. What does that do? That blunts dopamine release and testosterone for a very long period of time, which makes sense if pair bonding and sort of, you know, in our species anywhere, there's this idea that then other molecules would be exchanged with partners, pair bonding, potential for raising mates, etc. Without getting into a huge discussion about that, the point is this, masturbation and pornography are potently tapping into the dopamine system and can undermine the very processes of what I consider healthy processes of finding a mate, you know, dating, communication, eventually, if it's appropriate, sexual interaction, well, etc. Like Masturbation and pornography bring short-term relaxation and reduce stress. However, it creates a kind of loop because of the absence of a partner. A relationship between males and females balances neurochemicals such as prolactin and dopamine levels because of the bonding that occurs during sexual intercourse. Without that bonding, the brain still releases these chemicals during self-pleasure, which could be unhealthy for you. 
After ejaculation, the dopamine levels drop below baseline and you tend to pursue more extended masturbation periods to get the same kind of satisfaction achieved previously. In extreme cases, masturbation and pornography may disrupt your daily life and affect productivity. People who masturbate a lot can miss work or crucial social events because they don't want to miss their sessions. It can also affect their responsibilities as they wish to engage in longer sessions to achieve maximum satisfaction. Some people use masturbation as a substitute for a real-life relationship with the opposite sex since they want to avoid the complexity of being in a relationship with another person. What can you do to curtail the frequency of masturbation and pornography? There are a couple of things out there that can help. First and foremost, you can start with talk therapy. It usually helps to speak to a sex therapist to discuss how to cut down on masturbation. Typically, a sex therapist will find a way to help you get a hand on the problem. Secondly, you can mitigate the problem by replacing it with another healthier activity. Next time you feel an urge to masturbate, start any of the following activities instead. For example, you can run, start writing a journal, spend time with friends, or visit leisure parks. However, there is no defined frequency for masturbation. While some people can masturbate daily, weekly, or every month, others can masturbate multiple times a day, and some people completely abstain from it. I don't think we need to be entirely afraid of, of pursuing or engaging in things that release dopamine. Obviously, healthy sexual behavior, food that we love, social engagement, all of these things can be dopaminergic. It's the big peaks in dopamine that are not associated with any prior effort or organization of self that are particularly dangerous for the human being. In short, masturbation is not completely bad. Some health benefits include relieving cramps in males, reduced built-up stress, and improved mood. Therefore, we suggest that masturbation and pornography must be done in moderation. What's your thoughts on all of this? Let us know in the comments section. If you found this video interesting or helpful, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and press the notification bell so you won't miss any of our future uploads. Until then, take care.